I was going to make chicken salad, but did you want um, some noodles too? Well, this is what I was thinking. You're probably going to say no, but. What's it like to have your mom be the mayor? <laughs> well, sometimes it gets a little bit annoying because I don't get to spend um, that much time with her anymore because she has to do all the like, campaign and stuff. <laughs> but sometimes it's fun because I get to meet new people. And then sometimes it's not fun because when other when it's not fun because like when we meet other people they all want to talk to mommy and I can't talk to her so so it's kind of fun to have her home on Saturday huh <laughs> <laughs> who have you liked meeting who did you meet that you liked meeting Dr. Dr. Rice yeah oh I was thinking I saw. you met some pretty important people. Oh, you met some of the Spurs. I have. When we went to the thing at the. Those are the old Spurs. Okay. Uh, and I some met of them David are still. Robinson before. Mm hmm. And it tastes like something is missing. Tell me if I should put more mayonnaise or more sandwich spread. You need sugar. Yeah, why? How come it does. Okay, so that means sandwich spread, right? you make lunch with your daughter and so mm -hmm. forth. What does that say about Ivy Taylor and who you are? Well, certainly at the top of the list of who I am is a wife and mom. And so I think that gives me a great perspective on the lives of San Antonians. I think for most of us, our, our families are at the heart and soul of why we do what we do. And so um, me wanting to create a better San Antonio, a stronger San Antonio for my daughter is why I have wanted to serve an elected office and why I'm asking the voters to allow me to continue serving. Um, is it hard being the mayor and being the mother? <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. I think with the campaigning, it got a little bit harder. My daughter said, oh, she's missing a little time with me. And I've, we've promised her a fabulous uh, summer vacation <laughs> to make up for some of the things that, you know, we've been missing out on in the interim. But I have a very supportive husband. And so that certainly helps a lot. And even though I may feel a little guilty about missing time away from her, I also feel very excited that I'm providing for her an example of being engaged and making the community better and being a leader and being a woman. Okay, so let me just start out with the really broad question uh, that sure. we always ask, and that is, why are you running? Because initially you said you didn't want to run for mayor mm -hmm. and then you changed your mind. What made you change your mind? Well, so I had so many people ask me to consider running, and I'm sure you probably hear that from politicians all the time, but I really did have a lot of people ask me to reconsider, and so I thought and prayed about it a long time, and there are some things that I started working on that I'd like to see through to completion, like, for example, today we were at the kickoff for our planning effort, and that's going to take a while, and then we'll have a bond that will go out to the voters for capital improvements probably in 2017. And I want to make sure that uh, we get that right as far as making great investments that will catalyze additional investment for our city. So I thought that I should uh, ask the voters if they would allow me to continue so that I can continue that important work. For me personally, I feel that the timing was right. I really wanted to be effective during the time that I was serving as mayor and I think that if I had spent the majority of it also worrying about a campaign and worrying about the political ramifications of every decision that I would not have been as effective as I have been for the people of San Antonio. So, um, so I feel good about the timing. Let me just talk to you a little bit about your priorities. You know, mm -hmm. you could dig into a million and one things and I guess mm -hmm. as mayor you have to. but. If you look at uh, issues or projects or something like that, are there one or two things that stand sort of taller than anything else in terms of what you want to tackle? Well, I certainly want to ensure that our city remains economically competitive and there are some investments we need to make in order 
for that to continue happening. Uh, we do have a strong economy, but certainly we need to invest in ourselves in two ways. First, in our, through our capital infrastructure, and I already mentioned the 2017 bond program is coming up, and so we've got to be strategic about investing there. But also, we've got to invest in our uh, people. And so during the time I've been mayor, I focused quite a bit on workforce development. There are many San Antonians that haven't had the opportunity to benefit from our strong economy because they don't have the skills or education to be uh, equipped for the jobs that are being developed every day by local businesses. So I think it's real important that we develop a, a um, that we develop a focus on lifelong learning here in San Antonio so more of our citizens can tap into those job opportunities. And also, I'd love to um, our, continue investing in our businesses that are here, you know, figuring out as a city how we can help businesses that are here grow. How can we retain businesses that are here and how can we help them to grow and how can we inspire entrepreneurs here in San Antonio? A lot of things take money. Mm -hmm. that you want to do. I mean, of course, mm -hmm. some of it can be done through planning and just, you know, inspiration, but a lot of it takes money. And I think I've heard you say, and mm -hmm. all of the candidates say, they don't want to raise the tax rate. Sure. Um, is that still your position, that you can, yes. do, you, you can take care of business and not raise the tax rate? I think that we can definitely be creative and uh, innovative in using the dollars that we have, and we've got to have partnerships uh, because certainly the city of San Antonio organization can't do everything. We have to do things in partnership with the private sector and some of the other public stakeholders. So I think through strong collaborative efforts, we can achieve some of those goals. Um, in the past, I think you have supported a tax rate increase. What's different now than then? I, that is incorrect. It's incorrect? Yes, it okay. is. Um, I have never uh, advocated for or voted for a property tax rate increase. Uh, that There's been an allegation made by one of the other campaigns, but it's incorrect. Okay. You've never supported a tax increase? No. Okay. Is there a time you ever would? I can't imagine <laughs> what that time uh, would be. I mean, it would have to be something catastrophic. At this point, we're focused on growing our economy here so that we won't have to raise the property taxes. You, you pulled the plug on streetcar. Mm -hmm. um, can you explain why? And then tell me a little bit about what you would like to do to get traffic moving and to improve transportation options in the city. Okay. When I came into the mayor's office, I realized that I had to pull the plug on the streetcar project because it was so unpopular. Uh, it was unpopular amongst people who were opposed to the rail concept, and it was even unpopular amongst people who wanted to see rail here. People felt that the route was something that would just cater to tourists, that it wasn't a real transportation solution, and that was going to cost too much money. Now, I think VIA had envisioned it as a starting point for our broader rail system, but that got lost in translation, and the public didn't see it that way. And I knew that if we didn't pull the plug on it, that it was going to cast a shadow on any other planning efforts that we would have, and also that citizens would feel that their elected officials weren't responsive to them. So we did push the pause button there and defunded the project, and we've redirected our efforts towards transportation planning. Um, actually, we have a series of planning efforts that are ongoing, but a key part of that certainly is developing a multimodal transportation plan for our city. And so we'll be discussing what that could look like as we grow and what options make the most sense for San Antonians and that we can afford. Can you envision in the near future that you would put streetcar or light rail of some type back on the table? If that's what the, comes out of the public process, then we could consider that at that time. What I think would be more important to come first would be for us to invest in uh, ensuring that we have real strong, viable, 
kind of nodes of activity throughout the city because then it would probably be more cost effective to connect those areas. And I mean areas that are employment centers where a lot of people also live, work, and play. So connecting places like the Medical Center, uh, UTSA, Main Campus, Brook City Bay. So we want to see more activity in those areas and then maybe at some point then it could make sense to at least have a discussion about uh, rail or other options. When we were at the comprehensive planning meeting and you were looking at the diagram or the little the, the artwork that was up there and you, you said mm -hmm. you put porches up there. Uh -huh. <laughs> Why did you draw porches on, on the uh, the planning diagram today. What does that say about you and, and, and your goals and what you want to do? Well, I guess to me, front porches just are representative or symbolic of the idea of people getting to know their neighbors and being active involved in, you know, having a vibrant local community um, and being in, engaged in their community. You talk, uh, I think, a fair amount about having met your husband at church mm -hmm. and about your church being very important in your life. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to make, I don't want to, I don't know, does it guide you? Yes, yes. My faith guides me and I pray for, for wisdom daily. Uh, when I was younger, I, I often tell the story when I was younger, when I was in my 20s and I would go through something difficult and I talk to my mom and I say, well, what should I do? And she say, I pray about it. And I would get so mad, like, why can't she give me a real answer? But now that I'm almost 45, I certainly can understand the wisdom behind that advice that she gave me. You voted against the LGBT uh, ordinance or the non-discrimination non ordinance. ordinance. And I'm wondering if your faith had anything to do with that. Uh, if you have, if, if that informed you in any way or if there was some other reason you thought that was not the right thing to vote for? Well, I appreciate the opportunity to answer that question and uh, sometimes people do flat out just ask me and I, so I think it's great to have the chance to share because uh, rather than people speculating. So in 2011, I did vote for the domestic partner benefits for city employees. Uh, but in 2013, when we had a non-discrimination ordinance that was proposed, uh, it went beyond the scope of the City of San Antonio organization. And it included language that stated that if you were a business that did business with the city, that this had to be your standard as well. And I felt that that was us getting outside of the scope or reach of where government should go, and that it could place as in particular small business owners in a gray zone where they may have to make choices between their faith and the law. And so I thought that the city should lead by example rather than making that um, type of statement. So that's why I voted against it. So you thought it was a little too onerous on businesses? Yes. That issue has come up again now with respect <laughs> to going to the legislature on local control. <laughs> Does that have anything to do with why you haven't put that um, on the agenda? No, it has not. And so, that, yes, that's been a little frustrating, the speculation on that as well. Uh, we have a, a process for how we handle requests by council members, and which was actually established by Mayor Hardberger back in 2007. And it says that when a request is made uh, for a citywide policy item that it goes through the governance committee first. And so the item was scheduled to go to the next governance committee. And I understand that people are very concerned as and I am as well about the the mm -hmm. uh, some of the mm -hmm. things that are going on at the legislature that may threaten local control. However, we've already made some very strong statements. I've made a statement along with the other uh, big city mayors in Texas. Uh, we released a statement that you know we don't want the legislature to erode our ability to control our own destiny. And then when we, um, when the council approved and voted for our legislative package, that was a key and central tenet, and it very specifically outlined the fact that we did not want to, we did not want the legislature to take any action that would erode local control. So it, was, it has is has already been out there. I'm glad to reaffirm that, and so we'll be doing that. Okay, but this specific, this specific proposal. By one of your colleagues, you don't think you need to do it. I mean, do you find it redundant, or 
I do, but we, I understand that folks are very concerned based on the tenor and tone of the legislature. And so it, it's fine for us to reaffirm that that is our mm -hmm. position. So you'll put it on the agenda? Yes. Okay. There are four candidates that, mm -hmm. you know, four of you get more attention than the others because you're, you've all been office holders and I think you've been part of the uh, civic life and mm -hmm. making decisions as, as public leaders here in the, in the city of San Antonio. Um, all of you have experience mm -hmm. in public service. Why are you the best person for this job? Okay, great question. It comes up often. Well, I think I'm the best person for the job because I am the only person that really has had the municipal level experience within the city of San Antonio organization, not just as an elected official, but also a city employee. I actually worked for the city of San Antonio for six years. That's how I started out. Um, and then also, I'm not a career politician. Uh, serving as mayor of San Antonio is not a plan B for me, nor is it a political stepping stone. I'm someone who is genuinely focused on doing what's right for San Antonio and uh, being a public servant that will help guide us to into building a, a better city with a strong economy. And so I'm a person who is willing to look you in the eye and tell you what's going wrong or you know what's going on, even if you it's not what you want to hear. But then I'm willing to work with you, to work across a broad spectrum in order to get things done. And I'm not concerned about my political future because frankly this has been an unexpected uh, path for me uh, and I see it as an opportunity for me to get things done for the city and so that gives me a certain freedom I think in or in in an ability to do what's right for San Antonio and I think the other candidates don't have that ability so if Ruth McClendon decided not to run again would you run for her seat um, everyone keeps bringing that up. I'm not quite sure why, but um, I don't have any plans to do so. What else do you want to tell me about you, your family, anything you've done, maybe something you're most proud of that you think would uh, convey to the voters who you are and what you're all about? Okay special project that you've worked on that you're really proud of? Well, as far as special projects, certainly I'm really proud of the work I did on the east side as a District 2 council member. Uh, I was, when I came on the council, really my passion was about uh, restoring neighborhoods that have been left behind and people providing opportunities for people that have been left behind. And so really I led the effort to garner over $50 million in uh, federal funding for a comprehensive revitalization effort here on the east side. And it involves a number of partners, United Way, uh, the Housing Authority, and the San Antonio Independent School District. And so it's been a multi-year effort and we're starting to see results of that. But uh, it's not just important for the east side, it's also important for our city because I think there are so many lessons to be gleaned from the experiment we've been doing over here that I'd like to see applied to other sides of town. And really it's reflective of my desire um, as mayor to see San Antonio as a city of strong neighborhoods everywhere. Mm -hmm. I don't like the idea that people feel, well, I have to move to a certain side of town if I want to experience a certain quality of life. I believe we have to have balanced growth and that we have to have a strong quality of life throughout San Antonio. And so I'd like to see the same types of efforts that we've been doing on the east side and other parts of town that may be experiencing similar distress. Anything else you want to talk about? I've been encouraging uh, San Antonians to read through the Mayor's Book Club as well. Mm -hmm. So literacy is an issue that I think is real important for us in San Antonio and ties to our other goals related to education and economic development. So that's something I want to continue promoting as well. Sure. Can you explain to people what SA Tomorrow is? Oh, and, and, sure. And what its relationship with SA 2020 great, is? Great, great, great question. Okay, so SA Tomorrow uh, is the brand for our combined planning effort, and it includes a comprehensive plan, or some folks might call that a master plan, 
a multimodal transportation plan and a sustainability plan. And the idea is for us to to put all those pieces together to help guide us towards the year 2040. So back in, uh, was it 2010, I think, when we did the SA 2020 planning effort, which actually was a visioning effort. And so that allowed San Antonians to get together and talk about what some of their key priorities are as well as uh, what they want a snapshot of San Antonio to look like in the year 2020. And so we've been working on uh, some of those you know, key cause areas that have been articulated. So that is kind of a foundational document for the planning effort that we're doing right now. What's different about Essay Tomorrow is that it will inform the development of policy, on land use, urban design, and transportation, and it will also guide funding decisions. So we've got to have the vision to start with, but then you have to have the policy tools and the regulatory framework in place in order to make those things a reality. And so, so this takes it out to 2040. Yes, okay. it, it goes out, yes, this goes out to 2040, but it's more data driven. Mm -hmm. That includes an analysis of where we are right now on our transportation and our land use. And then we we'll use the vision to help us project out where we should make key capital investments in order to, for us to achieve the type of vision that we want to have for the year 2040. The other thing I'm, I'm interested in is both Mike and Leticia told us that as mayor they can bring back rideshare like Uber and Lyft. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's possible? I think it's possible if they roll over and say there's not going to be any regulation. <laughs> then it's well, entirely we, possible. Well, we should talk about that. <laughs> Why do you think Uber backed out? You went back to the table. You gave them some of what they wanted. What happened? Why, well, they, why? they said that the deal breaker was the 10 print background check. Okay, and that was the one thing we were not, as a council, we were not willing to yield on that because- Fingerprinting. Fingerprinting as a method of verifying the identity of the person who's the Uber driver. Now they have a background check system that uses various databases, but you could be checking someone's background, but if they're not who they say they are, then you, what are you checking, so? Don't some of the other cities use 10 finger background? Yeah, Houston uses it, and there's another city, I think, in Ohio. But what the Uber folks said to me was that, well, it was a bad idea for us to agree to do that in those cities, and so we're not going to agree to do it in San Antonio. And frankly, that was not acceptable. We felt this is the standard that we want to have in order to ensure the safety of our citizens. So unfortunately, what gets lost, because I think a lot of times when people read about it in the newspaper or see it on the evening news, there's not a discussion of the specific criteria that's being discussed and then in these forums the other candidates just say oh well I'll bring it back but the question is are you gonna tell these companies that they no longer have to have uh, fingerprints and I think this week um, in Austin at the legislature where they were up there lobbying the state officials were asking the same questions about those fingerprints and that is not an onerous requirement I mean, city employees have to have them teachers architects so I, I think it's a real reasonable request. Do the current cab drivers yes. have to have them? So taxi yes. cab drivers have to do it. Yes. 